Honorable Vice President for her message. Yes, ma'am. You are recognized, ma'am. Um, a message, sir, or uh, my statement regarding the point of order? Message? Mga kababayan, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. Warakmatulahi wa barakatu. Madayaw, mayong adlaw, kaninyong tanan. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. The officials of the Office of the Vice President, as well as each and every one of our satellite leads, satellite office leads, were in receipt of a letter from the Chairman of the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability dated dated September 13, 2024, requesting our presence or that of our duly authorized representatives in today's initial deliberation with preliminary determination on privilege speech number 379. In view of the said letter, I am appearing before you today not only as the head of office, but more importantly as the duly authorized representative of all officials of the OVP. Simply because we have, done, we have not done anything wrong. There is no misuse of funds. If there are audit findings, we shall gladly respond to them before the Commission on Audit. And if there are legitimate cases to be filed, then we shall gladly respond to them before the appropriate courts. In relation to this, may I just say that I take notice of the opening speeches and um, nasabi doon, there is a determination of misfeasance, nonfeasance, and malfeasance. And um, those are cases that should properly be taken in the courts of law. What we are witnessing now is no ordinary legislative inquiry. This exercise is a well-funded and coordinated political attack. This much is evident from the very words of the privilege speech that prompted this inquiry. A speech that simply meant to say, do not vote for Sara on 2028. It is clear to me that this inquiry is not about misused funds, accountability, or governance. Instead, it is solely aimed at discrediting my name and my office to prevent future political contests. I have publicly stated my reasons as to why I've chosen not to defend the OVP's budget proposal for 2025. I have narrated the issues I encountered in previous years, which can easily be confirmed by looking at the NEP, the GAB, and the GAA for fiscal years 2023 and 2024. Further, I have even shared the drama that transpired last year regarding the confidential funds. Hence, just as we have done last year, we again leave the 2025 OVP budget to the pleasure of Congressman Martin Romualdez. I am not asking for any special treatment nor am I asking you to uphold any tradition. There is no disrespect. All I am saying is that you have the complete freedom to do whatever you wish with the OVP budget. If you feel that all the documentary submissions are not enough, then by all means, wag kayo magbigay ng budget. Sa totoo lang, Hindi naman ang budget ang puntirya ninyo dahil napakadali naman magtanggal ng budget. What you are trying to do 
is make a case for impeachment. Hindi naman ako kakandidato sa nalalapit na eleksyon. Hindi ako namumulitika. Ang ginagawa ko lamang ay ang pagtupad sa aking oath of office at campaign platforms na trabaho, edukasyon, at maya mapayapang pamumuhay. Sinabi ko na noon at ilang beses ko nang inulit na hindi ako ang problema ng bayan na ito. Ang totoong problema ng bayan ay kagutuman, kahirapan, illegal na droga, kriminalidad, terorismo, hindi nasapat na healthcare, kalidad ng edukasyon, kawalan ng plano ng infrastruktura para sa disasters, at marami pang iba. So, you may try to destroy me, you can skin me alive and throw my ashes to the wind. But let it be known, you will find me unbowed. I will continue to serve the Filipino people no matter the personal cost or political intrigue. Having said that, I will not allow myself to be subjected to an inquiry based on an empty privilege speech just so you can attack me and do indirectly what you failed to do directly during the budget hearings. I therefore request this committee to terminate this inquiry for its clear lack of any proposed legislation or substantive matter for discussion. Shukran.